In this video, we're going to cover a generic or simple trigger. This is a trigger that can be activated by overlapping with the trigger area or by interacting with the trigger itself, such as with a button. The generic trigger is a generic blueprint that has been created to allow us to easily drag and drop it into the scene and interact with something else. And if that something else allows us to trigger it, it will trigger it. Let's go ahead and look at our code here. If I run through my example map, we'll find my trigger is actually right here. We have a little visual cue to indicate where it's at, as well as a box that defines the volume for when we overlap and trigger. If we run this example, well, it's now hidden. But when we walk through it, we can see our doors opening and our doors closing as needed, and we'll actually can see both of them at the same time. If we go ahead and stop our example and we look through our code, we'll find it's pretty simple. We are use, utilizing overlap events and interact events sent from our player, along with some settings on our actual object itself to determine how it works and what it works with. The trigger by proximity settings allows us to walk into our trigger and then have our events happen. Let's go ahead and look at how it's set up and how the code works. Inside of our setup, we have a few different options here. We have what we can trigger, if we can see our debug, which mesh, if any, and then whether it's activated by proximity or interact. If we check our activate by proximity, it's gonna go ahead and let our triggers actors know that they have been triggered and then they will process whatever they do internally. If this is not checked, nothing will happen. Let's go ahead and check our debug visible and run this and you can see when we walk in, nothing happens. We'll have to enable, activate by proximity, go ahead and play and now they will activate when we walk through it. Let's look at our code that sets this up. It's pretty simple. Basically, when we overlap our trigger, we check to see if activate by proximity is turned on. If it is, we check to see if the class that we want to allow to trigger us is the class that interacted with us. If we look at our settings, we find class that can open door. And it's currently set to third person character. This allows you to restrict what can trigger this based on a class setting. So for example, only your player may open it or you may want a projectile to trigger this or whatever you want, it restricts it to that class only. After that, if that's true, we simply loop through all of our actors to trigger and then tell them to trigger an event using the generic blueprint interface, blueprint interface triggerable. As long as the item we are talking to implements that interface and as long as it has a event inside of it or function to do something with that, then something will happen. The nice part about using blueprint interfaces is if we're trying to talk to something that does not implement it, it will simply fail silently and we're not going to get an error. Our trigger by interact settings allows our character to interact with our trigger volume. And when it happens, it sends out the trigger event. This is useful if we want to, for example, set up a button or keyboard or some sort of device that the player is interacting with, and then an event occurs. If we look at our object, we find we have the activate by interact option. We'll go ahead and check that this time. We'll keep everything else the same, but this time we're actually gonna give it a trigger mesh. This is just simply a mesh assigned to show up, and it would be a button, a computer screen, whatever we want, if we want a mesh. The mesh is completely optional. You can have it without the mesh. It's just a visual reference. At this point, we'll uncheck debug visible since we're gonna go ahead and have our mesh. We'll go ahead and walk in here. We'll go over to our object and hit E, which is my interact key. When I push it, well, my doors work. I could also hit the mouse button and it's gonna interact as well. If I move far away, nothing occurs. Now the way the interact is handled is using blueprint interfaces but it is also handled by our character since our character is the one who actually knows if there's anything around us it needs to interact with. As our character takes all the inputs, it needs to be the one to handle passing on if we push the key. If we go through our code, 
we'll look at the interact with event and we'll find something very similar to our overlap event. We'll check and see if activate by interact is enabled. And then we'll go ahead and just tell all of the actors that we are told to interact with our list right here, actors to trigger, that we want to trigger them. Now this event is called by our player. If we go through our code and we look at our third person character, we have some code that is set up to specifically handle this. We have what happens when we push the interact button, but we also have what happens when we overlap with things we want to interact with. This is pretty simple. Basically when our character overlaps something, if that something implements the interactable interface, we add them to a list of interactable objects near us. And when they leave the overlap, we simply remove that object from the list. This will allow us to keep a list at all times of things around us that we've interacted with, that we can interact with. Now, when we push the button, our interact button, in my case, the E or the middle mouse button, it's whatever your input is set to. We'll go ahead and tell every interactable object near us to interact. That then tells our trigger we've been interacted with, and it tells now our items to trigger. Pretty simple setup. This is a basic simple trigger. For example, I can go in here and I could add another item really easily. I can remove an item simply. I can show my debug and my stack mesh. I can have things enabled or disabled whenever I feel like it by simply communicating with my trigger and telling it when and when it should not work. So it's a nice simple way to drag and drop something in. For example, I'll set this up now. We'll delete our existing trigger. Let's say I want our trigger to open this door. I would grab my generic trigger. Let's say we wanted it over here and we wanted it to be a button that I interact with. We'll go ahead and tell our trigger type to be interact. We'll set up a generic mesh. We'll go ahead and set up like a floor this time. Oh, that is too big. That is our giant floor. We'll go ahead and set up, we'll set up the cube again this time and we'll make it kind of like a pressure switch. So we'll put our cube down on the ground like that. We're going to grab our overlap trigger. This is the item that we used for determining our triggering. We're going to drag this out. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. Let's go something like 50 by 50. And we'll put it on the top. So basically whenever the player touches this, it's going to go ahead and trigger. Um, let's do something like 10. Let's make it a little smaller. Let's make it where the player has to actually go onto the button itself like that. We'll grab our trigger again, pull it up. There we go. So now once the player touches this, it's going to cause an overlap event. We'll go back to our trigger. We are set to activate by interact. Well, who can open the door? We're going to make sure it's our third person character. In this case, third person character. Actors to trigger. Well, the nice thing is we can easily drag and drop things from the scene. So for example, we could grab whatever we wanted. In this case, this is generic door one. Or we could grab, for example, this again, drag generic door in. Or we could use the picker and grab it like this. So we'll pick the generic door like that. And you'll find generic door selected. We don't care about our debug and that's it. That's our setup. Now, if I was to play this, we'll walk over to our sweet trigger, walk over it, and then the door should trigger. Now, obviously we did not set that up. Okay, well, yeah, we set it up by interact. We want proximity. Now, when we walk over it, the door will trigger because we set it up to be proximity, like we're simulating stepping on something. And that's it. That is a simple, reusable generic trigger by utilizing interface events, and generic coding structure, we were able to make something that we can adapt and reuse to whatever we need.